Tom Chattel has been sharing some of the information that Matt Rule shared with him in a conversation that they had recently. And in today's Tuesday column, he mentions in my conversation with Husker coach Matt Rule, he indicated he would be against playing non-conference games against Power 5 teams. With USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington joining the Big Ten, it doesn't make sense, Rule says. Quote, in a year where you hope to play 15 or 16 games, why would you elect to play a really tough game early? Later, uh, he is quoted as saying, I think personally with 18 teams in the Big Ten, you should give yourself the best chance with your scheduling. Then Chattel adds that Nebraska is scheduled to play Colorado this year and Cincinnati next year, but a home-and-home -home series with Tennessee, Arizona, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State would probably go away. And then a little bit later on, Rule is quoted as saying in Chattel's column, college football is going to be all about getting to the playoff, getting to the tournament. Then it's how do I get there and have a home playoff game? So the rule plan, according to Chattel, everyone in the conference should abide by the same scheduling rule. Maybe that means the Big Ten and the SEC. Quote, I would like to play local Division I teams, Rule said. We're playing, playing Northern Iowa next year. Those kids are from our region. Those kids maybe grew up watching Nebraska. I just want it to be consistent. If they say everyone is playing one, fine. I just don't want Nebraska to hurt Nebraska. I want to do the same thing Ohio State and Northwestern and Auburn are doing. That's the great thing about the NFL. Everything is consistent. For the record, so, uh, Ohio State moving forward, they have big time non conference games on their schedule. So if you want to go to so Ohio State, Texas, and even Michigan, who, you know, yeah. recently, you know, has had some really awful non conference schedules the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, Ohio State has Bama, know. they have Texas, they have Georgia. So I'm Matt Rule, Josh Peterson, handshake meme. Couldn't agree more with you, Matt. Right. But then it's the idea of, you know, and I get where he's coming from. And I and I want to say this, in, in, and I'm not saying this just to be critical of Matt Rule. What I am being critical of is this groupthink yes. that has now permeated the college sport to say, we don't need to play good non-conference games because we play enough in our league that we're, we're going to be fine. And that groupthink to me is... Well, certainly it's looking out for number one. And I'm not saying that Matt Rule, as he is quoted as saying, I don't want Nebraska to hurt Nebraska. I understand that. But what I don't understand is why this group think has to exist in the first place. And it, technically it's not true because as we've seen, Georgia has beefed up their schedule in the non-conference. You just mentioned Texas. You just mentioned Ohio State. Yeah. So we still don't have we still don't have universality amongst all participating institutions. We're seeing some of the teams at the very top saying, yeah, we're fine playing other power conference schools, but now Matt rule is kind of going in the opposite direction. So I, I, I agree with him on the consistency part, but here's the part that I don't like. It's the consistency of, we don't need to play anybody else in the non-conference. We're fine. Just playing three scrubs and then go off and do our own thing in our conference. Yeah, that's the part that I disagree with. That's the part that I hate. That's the part that 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 ruins the sport or hurts the sport and makes it less appealing to watch, especially in September when most of these games take. Place. Yeah, because I mean, I look at it from a, a few different viewpoints. The first is just like entertainment. And, and I, I will I will offer the olive branch to so many Husker fans that are disagreeing with me right now. And I understand why in that. I am in this for the entertainment and I'm not viewing this through the lens of more wins. So I will admit that from the, from the jump. And I will also admit again, before I really kind of get into my opinion, I will also admit to understanding why Nebraska thinks that this is the best idea for things moving forward and why programs in general, or not all programs, but why a lot of programs I've heard John Kansas state brought up many times today. Bill Snyder brought up many times. I understand that viewpoint. Um, but I'm in this for the entertainment. And so you tell me like, this is what we're going to do. I, it, okay, cool. I love, I love, I love September, you know, discussion surrounding college football when everybody in the sport says, yeah. And I don't really know who is good right now because they played a bad non-conference schedule. Okay. So that's what you want everybody to do. I would also certainly disagree with the idea of you can just play the non-conference roll into your conference. And then that will tell us who is good. No, if, if suddenly schedules are just super insular, 
you know, I think back, John, to the COVID basketball season and how that was supposedly the best Big Ten league of all time. And you always pushed back and said, I don't know. They're only playing each other. I don't know. And what happened in the in the in the NCAA tournament, John? The Big Ten fell on its face because mm-hmm. they had been challenging each other. But had they really challenged themselves? Had they really gone outside? And the answer was no. Uh, now, that was for a different reason. But I just... I just don't understand why this is what people want. And and I said it in the crossover, man. I think one of the more frustrating parts about Nebraska football falling when they have is that like these discussions have gone totally in the in the in this direction of it's just about the wins. It's just about I, I want to start three and oh. I want to start three and oh. And like I get it, winning is a lot more fun than losing. But man, I always liked growing up looking at that list of the future non-conference schedule. I remember when USC had been on it for years and suddenly USC got good. And it was like, that's going to be really fun when Oregon showed up on the non-conference schedule. Oh my gosh, Oregon, Chip Kelly, Mark Helfrich, that offense coming to Lincoln? That sounds incredible. I remember debating with people, should they add Boise State for a one-off? And I always said yes, even though Boise State at the time was a giant killer. They were David to the Goliaths of college football. But I like watching interesting college football games. And so that's the thing that I want. And so to see this fan base just say like, yep, sign me up. This is okay with me. As they'll be bitching about their horrible home slate and their tickets, it it, it baffles me because I've, I've seen the other side of the argument when September rolls around. I know what it will be. Josh, I, I'm I'm trying to go through right now, and and I'm actually using Husker Max um, as a guide, but I'm trying to think back the last time Nebraska played a non-conference schedule that featured no power conference opponents, and I realize that the definition of power yeah, conference opponents over has the years. changed over the years, but you know the traditional power conference opponents, the, 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 the big 10 schools, the sec schools, you know, I'm thinking back to when Nebraska was big eight, big 12, or today, you know, ACC schools, PAC 12 schools and the like. And I, I don't think there has ever been a year that Nebraska played a non-conference schedule. This is excluding the COVID year. Cause there were no the, non-conference yeah, yeah, yeah. games Yeah, where they didn't play at least one, if not two, power conference schools in a year. I mean, I'm going up through the nineties right now. It has not happened. I don't know. I don't know if it has ever happened. And so this idea that, you know, well, we don't need to play any of the other power leagues, you know, again, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to determine, well, who actually is better when there's no cross pollination, when there's no, you know, SEC versus Big Ten games or Big 12 versus ACC games and all this other stuff. And I get it. It's a small sample size. It's not going to be perfect. It's not like a college basketball or a college baseball season where there's a lot more games, but it's something. Mm -hmm. And so if everyone just goes into their neighborhood and does their thing and plays a bunch of FCS or low, low tier FBS schools, and that's their non-conference. If everyone decides to do that, then then what are we doing here? Yeah, and I like well, I, honestly, what are we doing? And I don't want like this comment from Dion is wild to me. It's suicide to play three big name games plus the Big Ten slate. Who is asking for that? No, no, no one's asking no, for that. No, the only thing that I want. And uh, shout out to Dave Fight who put together a great Excel spreadsheet of Nebraska in the non-conference since. 2020 and so he goes all the way back and and obviously in some of these years they're going to play four non-conference games in some of these years they're going to play three non-conference games because that's what they're doing now and he excluded the COVID year and and the breakdown is as such John 52 percent of the non-conference games since 2000 have been against F- FBS level competition 33 percent have been against power schools and then 15 percent have been a bit against one double a slash fcs schools that breakdown now i i would certainly take out the uh the fcs one double a stuff but you want to add those up together and that sounds good with me three non-conference games 33 percent that means one power five 66 percent that's two games you know group of five I think that that's what I have always wanted. And that I think is a nice representation of, you know, because there was another comment a few minutes ago 
I like UTEP at home and then Colorado instead of last year. Yeah, this was from Max. Minnesota and Colorado. And it, I couldn't agree more. I'm not asking for start with the Power 5 team on the road. Start with another Power 5 team in conference. No. You know, I understand wanting to build up. Some years you're going to start with one game and, and then have a tough one. Some years you'll start with two easy games and then you'll have a hard one. Whatever it is on a year-to-year basis. You and I are certainly not asking for, you know, put Bam on the schedule and also, you know, put Washington no. State on the schedule and also, no. you know, put Florida State on the schedule. Like, who's asking for that? No, no one in here is asking for that. No I one's asking for that. So, on the schedule. so, so don't read this as to say, you know, Nebraska should always have an Alabama, Georgia, or a Florida State on the schedule. No, but they, they should not have a northern. I mean, they should be trying to limit if not all out eliminate all games against the FCS. I hate that. Yeah. I think it's I think it's cowardice. I think it's chicken poop. It's garbage. There's no reason that an FBS school, especially a power 5 FBS school should be punching that low down in its weight class. Absolutely not. And and, and I've been critical of the SEC for this forever. And for the most part the Big 12 at least the sorry the Big 10 used to be very consistent. Delaney was Delaney never liked that. And he said, I don't want to see that. Uh, and so I give, I, I tip my hat to the Big Ten. But even they have gone against that now in recent years. I don't want to see that. Yeah, they, We don't need to see that. Uh, and, and yet, if the attitude's going to be, and, and I'd be curious to know what Matt Rule is talking about, saying I'd like to play a bunch of area Division One schools. He did mention Northern Iowa by name. But are, are we just talking about the Dakota schools and Northern Iowa? Uh, schools like that? Um, if that's the case, uh, sign me out. I don't want anything to do with that. I get it. The conference is harder, but you're also not playing all the other 16 teams or 17 teams in your league every year. You're only playing nine conference games. So you still got three to go. And, and I've always thought that the, the, the modern, I'll call it the modern Nebraska formula, which has basically been followed since the two early two thousands was, hey, we want to go out and play someone in our weight class, you know, another power conference school. Then we want to play a, you know, find another one or two, um, uh, you know, group of five schools. And and that was going to be our schedule. And every so often, you know, yeah, we would bring in an Idaho State or, you know, a, a Northern Iowa or whatever. Um, but I like that. And so the, the the breakdown that Dave Fight gave us, that's a good breakdown. Yeah. That's a good breakdown. You know, over Too easy, little... one hard, you know. Yeah. One and, name, and, two not names. And, you know, I'm looking right now at Alabama. Hey, this is, you know, who knows? Maybe, they, maybe they'll change their mind sure, as well. Sure, yeah, and that, that's part of this argument that I, I do, I will admit, I wonder if I'm going to end up looking like an idiot in two years when a lot of these games end up getting canceled. But in 2025, Alabama is going to be playing Florida State and Wisconsin. Oh wow, that's ten. Co- that's ten Power Five games, John. In 2026, they're going to have uh, West Virginia and Florida State. Wow. In 2027, they have West Virginia and Ohio State. In 2028, they have Ohio State and Oklahoma State. In 2029, they have Oklahoma State and Notre Dame. And then even moving ahead, 2032 and 33, Arizona and Minnesota. I. I, if 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 they're going to stick with that, now again, maybe if everyone's starting to go in a different direction, but if they're not, then I don't. I I, I just listen. I'm I'm with you. I am looking out as, as the same way as you are. I just want good, entertaining football. And I'm sorry to me, a Power Five school playing an FCS school is not entertaining. It's not good. Or three low level group of five schools. And last time I checked, they don't give away those tickets for free. Well, why they would I mean, they do for the why, red carpet experience? Not, not, I guess they do. And I guess that's the, the wild car- part about this, John, is we keep talking and it's not just a Nebraska problem, but it's a college football problem. And right. that is people butts in the seats. Why do you think you just read a lot of Alabama games? Did you notice that none of them were neutral site games? You wonder why that is? It's because Bama fans got sick of all those neutral site games, and Bama yeah, had they were tired of they were tired of traveling. They had to the completely time. change their viewpoint. I like this tweet from Sam. He says, "I wish the TV partners would almost make them do something like a bracket buster, where every team leaves one non-conference slot open and TV assigns it, or even all Power Four teams get a Power Four opponent at random." I think that's a tremendous idea. I think that that, that something like that would be great. And like to go back to what Matt Rule said at the end of the column. The idea that not every schedule is um, not even created equal, but they don't follow the same rules. 
I couldn't agree with him more. It's it's one of the more frustrating parts of the sport, and sadly, it's a fix that I don't think is going to happen, John, until NFL light becomes even more of a thing where everyone is playing X amount of games like this, X amount of games like that, X amount of games like this. But in an era still where the Big Ten plays nine, the Big 12 plays nine, the SEC plays eight, and the ACC plays eight, uh, it, it's just it's super difficult. And so that's why BAM is going to play two power conference games in the non-con. Meanwhile, Nebraska apparently wants to move to zero of them in the non-con. It, yeah, I, I'd be curious to know, is, is Matt Rule reacting to something that he's hearing behind the scenes that just hasn't been acted out on yet? Yeah. Or Is it Michi- it, Michigan it, just won, and they just right. won without a, a conference schedule uh, that was very forgettable, a non-conference schedule, rather, very forgettable. And, hell, their conference schedule, too, John. We made jokes about it. It wasn't until November that they played Penn State, and so we didn't really – how many times did we say going into November, I think they're good, I think they're really good, but they haven't played anybody yet. That's – see, and again, this is where a lot of – I do – will admit that my bias is as someone who wants to be entertained and wants to have something interesting to talk about. But I can't really find anybody outside of a Michigan fan who was just happy to be undefeated that enjoyed the first two months of this team being this kind of weird outlier of, I think they're good, but I don't really know how good they they actually are. I don't, I, I just don't find that stuff appealing. I don't find that enjoyable. And, you know, I can't imagine that people will want to fill up Memorial Stadium to watch three of these games every year. And I know that because they don't want to fill up Memorial Stadium to watch three games against solid to, to great competition at times over the last handful of seasons. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spot checking right now, uh, various power conference schools and looking at their future schedules, and, and and everyone that I've seen so far. All right, well, here's one, at least for the moment, doesn't have anything. Michigan in 2029 only has Western Michigan scheduled in the future, mm-hmm. um, but in future years, like this year. They're going to play Texas next year. They're going to play Oklahoma year after that. They're going to play Oklahoma the year after that. They're going to play Texas. And then they have Notre Dame coming back on the schedule um, in the, in the 2030. So I, I, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know what rule is exactly reacting to. Again, it could be something that he's hearing behind the scenes or motive, you know, something that's got momentum behind the scenes in terms of canceling some of these series. But I, I, and again, I understand the whole idea of self-preservation. But it doesn't do anybody any favors as far as a fan is concerned if all you're going to get are three cupcakes every year in the non-conference. People like to bring up Bill Snyder. All right, let's talk about Bill Snyder. Let's look at what Bill Snyder was doing. And remember, this is 25 years ago now. Bill Snyder was trying to build a program that had reached the depths of college football. As much as we like to lament how poor Nebraska has been in recent years, they have not been at the depths of college football like Kansas State has seen the bottom of the sea. Mm -hmm. And so when they were playing these cupcake non-conference schedules, that was back in the earlier days. And granted, he still kind of drug it a little bit further along than I would have been comfortable with, but I understood it in the time. But then even eventually, by the time, you know, Bill Snyder was later in his career, they were playing better non-conference games. I remember them playing USC, uh, for example. So this is, you know, that was something that was done intentionally, kind of similar to what Fred Hoiberg did did this year with Nebraska ball schedule. He intentionally had that non-conference schedule very easy because they were trying to build some momentum. All right. And right now, like, John, that's looking like, okay, so they got it looked momentum. like it worked. They got it momentum, looked like it worked. But if they miss the NCAA tournament, that'll be the reason why. That'll be the reason why. So they got the momentum. They made the trade off and they did get the momentum. But if they miss the NCAA tournament, oh my gosh, that is going to be worked uh, or used against them rather in a big, big way. Certainly it will. By the way, like, but again, they, I. I don't. Go ahead. I don't. Sorry. I don't. I don't mean to argue uh, too much here with Dave. But Dave says Matt Rule is trying to rebuild a program that has been one of the absolute worst in the Power Five. So I guess here's the other part of this discussion, John, that I don't think has been acknowledged a whole lot today, and, and I'm guilty of not acknowledging this part. This scheduled conversation is for future years. We're talking yeah. about this years down the road. So if Matt Rule, so are we expecting to still suck in five years? Cur- th- thank you. That's my exact thought process. So if we're talking about changing the schedule in five years, then Nebraska are they still bad in five years? They can't change the schedule for 24. They can't change the schedule for 25. They admitted that. So at the at the minimum, we're talking about 2026. That would be year four. And if, if there is not you know tangible progress in year four, I know what the discourse will be, and it won't be about the damn schedule. 
So, like, that's the other fallacy of this whole argument. We can't go into a time machine and have this exact same discussion five years ago and say, eh, you know, I don't really like that 2023 schedule. It's starting tough, and that might not be very good for a coach in year one. No, no, no. That already happened. 2026 is going to be year four. So, like, mm, frustrating. And again, it goes back to the quote of college football is going to be all about getting to the playoff, getting to the tournament. Then it's how do I get there and have a home playoff game? I mean, the, the motivation here for rule isn't about, hey, we're trying to build something here and we want a, a nice long runway. Sure, no, sure. this is a this is this is about I mean, that quote is essentially saying, hey, we're a part of the, one of the big boy conferences. We need to game the system. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's what that quote essentially and is. And that's that's how, that's going to be the viewpoint of a lot of these schools. If I can't recruit and play at the level of Georgia and Ohio State, then I need to to put together a schedule that will allow me as good as possible to work the math, as you said, to game the system. And that is what Nebraska is hoping to do. You know, I mean, on one hand, I, I will I will give him applause for thinking this way because there are a lot of people in my mentions day like I I, I just want to be nine and three. It's like okay, cool. Congrats on going nine and three instead of eight and four. Because you took off a tough non-conference game, I would find the 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 eight and four record with a good non-conference game inherently more interesting than nine and three with a bunch of cupcakes. So at least Matt Rule is thinking about a playoff. You know, now they obviously got to get to that level. And, and 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 again, when you look at the future Nebraska schedule, you know, uh, Oklahoma State. Yeah, I know Oklahoma State's been good, um, but really, we're running away from Oklahoma State. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like the schedule. That's not the Nebraska with, I know. Yeah, this isn't filled with Georgia and Bama and Florida State. No. Like these these non conference no. games. There's obviously uh, Oklahoma, a historic rivalry, Arizona, as you just mentioned. Um, like th these are, yeah, we're not talking about the the best of the best right now. We're just talking about good, interesting schools. And and you know, and maybe this 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 these quotes will stir up some conversation elsewhere, and people will realize, yeah, maybe this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But we also know this too. Who knows how college football is going to look in two years, much less five years. We could be at a point where the whole thing is blown up and the only teams playing each other are oh, Big yeah. Ten teams and SEC teams. Yeah, isn't that the odd part about this, John? You and I, I think we're going to get our wish on non-conference or tough games, and it's going to be in the worst way imaginable. I think yes. you and I are going to get our wish. We're going to end up having that. Um, it's just not going to be the way we want it to be.